Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Here I'm at Bio Dude Houston. You guys know me. Come by Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, Saturday, 10 to 2. It's about a week before Black Friday in November. My time here is coming close to paternity leave. I'm really excited. Um, but I have a lot of awesome things coming uh, for Black Friday, some permanent changes to our shipping, which I know all of you guys are going to be really excited about because I'm really excited about it too. Um, and today, what I have in front of me is a 20 gallon long terrarium. Now, I don't do a lot of tanks that aren't front opening, but this tank size is very suitable for an adult to a sub adult to a baby Kenyan Samboa. Now, I did a video on these guys a long, long, long time ago when I was first starting out, but I got some babies here at the BioDude Houston and let me tell you, I love this species so much because they're great for beginners. They are relatively easy to care for. They're boas, which I'll explain to you guys in a, in a little bit why they're so cool. And you can see here, we're just trying to dig. So these guys are a fossorial species. They have to spend a lot of their time in their, in their burrows. Now, these guys are from Africa. They are from the, 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 the east and northeast section of Africa. Um, and they spend a lot of their time in the, in the loamy, sandy substrate. They do bask occasionally, but they like to sit out. They like to have their entire body submerged and just have the edges of their eyes sticking out above the soil. And then once a small mammal or bird or lizard comes across their path, they can strike at it out of nowhere. Um, and just like, just like other snakes, they are constrictors. So they do constrict their prey to eat it. Uh, and they're boas. So I love boas because they are considered new world snakes, which means they're live bears, which is so cool to, to wake up one morning and just have baby snakes in your tank. It's super rewarding, guys, and it's really cool. Um, now, these guys do need cooled like, like some of your other snakes. Uh, so you, you typically cool them from around Christmas till February, spike up the temperature, put, the, put a pair together for a week, feed, repeat, feed, and then... That almost always works, at least from the people that I've known that have produced them. Uh, that's what they told me. So I personally have never bred Kenyan Samboas. And they come in all different types of colors, guys. You know, there's so many different unique traits of this species that are, f are available here, uh, here in the United States. So pretty cool. So let's get to building. So with my 20 gallon long terrarium, this is good. This is okay for one adult for, for the entirety of your Kenyan's life. If you wanted to stay on the smaller side, they typically stay around under two feet long. Two, two feet long is pretty reasonable. So to me, a 20 long might be pushing it for an adult size, but for, for this little guy, this is, this is a, a big old kingdom in here. So I am gonna be using my Terra Sahara since they do like, you know, sandy, loamy soil, especially in that area of Africa, where it does get pretty hot, does have its seasons. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my Terra Sahara and this is, this is about four bags worth. So this is about four, six quart bags worth that I used. And I am just simply gonna skate my Sahara how I wanna have it. So Something that's gonna be really interesting, especially when keeping the Kenyans, is when you see, after the Sahara gets settled, and you see here on the edge, you're gonna see all of the different tunnels and burrows that your snake makes. And that is super rewarding to see, and it's even more rewarding to watch the substrate actually hold the burrow and know it's safe. So after we get our initial layer of the Terra Sahara again um, in, or if you're doing like a, you know, like a, like a homemade mix, you just wanna make sure that A, it aerates extremely well. So adding things like, uh, like clay uh, and other really good aerators in there to create different densities in the soil is imperative to your success. Anyway, not to, uh, n not to digress. So we got the Terra Sahara in here. I have a couple different layers. After that, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of biodegradables. So I am actually not going to use a ton um, for, the, for the Kenyan. This is the AAA sphagnum moss. So this is the grade A stuff, and Audrey was kind enough to get it at the per perfect consistency for me. 
There is no water dripping out of this whatsoever. It's wet, but my hands aren't really that wet. That is the consistency when you're setting up your Sahara enclosure with my substrate with your spag moss. So with your six quart bag, you're only gonna need maybe this much of it. Say a little bit under half. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I got my little bit under half right here. Then I'm gonna add in my other forms of biodegradables. So I'm gonna add in some leaf litter. So what this is, this is some uh, oak leaf litter that we have here at the BioDude. And I'm gonna utilize about 70% of this bag here. Okay. All right, so you can see, I kinda just have it all laying here on the top. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my included BioShot, and again, I put about four six quart bags worth of Terra Sahara in here. So we're gonna use 24 quarts of BioShot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump the BioShot in here. Just kind of go right like that. So people are like, Bio Dude, does the BioShot replace the bugs? What is it? The bio, what the BioShot does is it injects your fungal and biological processes into the soil, creates an organ is organic fertilizer to jumpstart your root systems, as well as aiding them in, in forming their symbiotic relationships with the different microbiological processes therein to help you on your back end of bioactivity. Now, when you use the springtails and isopods, you get that in the back end, but the springtails and isopods also help aerate your soil. The BioShot does that in the way of promoting root growth. Root growth, plants grow faster, roots go further, more aeration, vice versa. So the more type of activity you have going in here, whether it's just bugs or just BioShot, it all plays a very important role for the longevity of your soil. So what I have right here are some powder orange isopods. These are your Persinia species. So like I say in all the videos when I use them, you want to make sure that you always have enough biomass in here, okay? Uh, because this species will, will eat, you know, your cork bark, it'll eat your leaf litter and stuff like that pretty aggressively. So you don't want to run out and they breed very prolifically. Here are the springtails, as you can see. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first, before I dump these in, is I'm gonna mix everything up the way that I want it. Okay. All right, so again, it's not very, there's not a lot of leaves in here. You know, there's enough to support my processes and the bugs, okay? but nothing too crazy. And that's because I'm not trying to have as many leaves at, the, at this point in here, just because this species and their environment, you know, you can use other types of biodegradables to do that to help give you more of the, this is close to their environment type of look, if you guys are following what I'm saying. So I got the substrate layer down. Now I'm gonna dump in the springtails and the isopods. So I'm just gonna dump the springtails right here. And I'm gonna dump the isopods right over me off. Now again, you can try, you can try uh, whatever species you want. Dwarf whites will not work in here. Dwarf purples don't see working in here. Powder blues would do great. Dairy cows would do great. Scabers will do great. So next, I just want to show. I want to show, show you guys in the product that I'm offering on wholesale. This is our forest floor decor. So we sell this for uh, a couple bucks. Uh, and it has a bunch of different pieces of either cork bark, nut pots, ghostwood pieces, you know, all the small stuff for your tinier enclosures or to use as feeding stations for your cleanup crew. So I have a lot of different pieces out of like a pack like this that I'm going to be using uh, in this enclosure. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I want to figure out heating and lighting before I go any further. So this top right here, I want to show you guys something really important. If I can do it, your snake can do it. So you need clamps right here. The general rule of thumb is a clamp here and a clamp here and a clamp here and a clamp here to keep the screen in place. It's very, very important if you're gonna go with a glass tank with a screen lid for a snake, trust me. So, some, so I have a lot of people asking me about heat mats. So as I've learned, you know, I still, if I, if I see people using them with substrate, I am going to put it onto the side 
okay, just to A, make sure that core doesn't get pinched. But I'm always going to make sure that it's hooked up to a thermostat regardless, okay? But I don't see a, I don't see this giving you enough heat to, any, to A, generate a basking hotspot that this animal does bask. And, and number two is to get that nice difference in ambience that you're going to want. So what I am going to be using is, a, is, a, is a, this combination right here. So this is, you can use any thermostat that you want as long as it's rated for the wattage that you're using. This is the thermostat, 600 watt by Exoterra, but it has night drop and it has dimming, which is great because you can use it for LEDs and other stuff like that to really, to have the sun go down slowly and have the sun come up slowly to again, mimic the environment a little bit more closely. And for the heat source, I'm gonna be using this Exoterra glow light. So I'm gonna be debating between these two bulbs here, either a 25 watt or a 50 watt. With how close we're gonna be getting, I'm probably gonna start with a 25 watt with inside this fixture that is gonna sit right here, okay? So the 25 watt's gonna be right here. I'm gonna plug this into the thermostat and I'm gonna set the thermostat to 92 degrees. I want the hot spot on this side to be 92. And I'm gonna put the probe up a little bit higher when I do that. So that, and so that way when it goes above 92, this light just turns off. The glow light, as it, as it turns off, it's gonna retain a little bit more of that heat. So it doesn't kill your bulb as fast because it's constantly not turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. The glow light with it keeping some of the heat keeps the probe a little bit warmer while still giving you that basking thing. That's just the tip I learned a while ago. That works for me. I don't know if that's always gonna work for y'all, but it I, feels like it saved me money especially when I was learning. Now, I am going to be providing UVB. Um, I'm going to be going for the plants. I'm going to be running a, a, a solar grow, 12 inch. I'm going to be connecting the solar grow with this daisy chain with another solar grow that's going to have a Reptisun 10.0 in it. Now, um, once I get this set up, I'm going to be checking the Ferguson zones with my solar meter, but I'm going to have the plant the plant, plant light over here, and this, with how it's connected, is going to be more like this, okay? Uh, because this cord will allow me to go about right here. Perfect. So I'm going to attempt to have the UVB strip be as close as possible underneath the basking for two and one. Okay. You can also, if you don't want to go with the solo grow combo or, you know, you say bio duty, you know, I just, I want to go a different way with my lighting, but I still want to do UVB. You can definitely go with just the solo grow with the Reptisun. Okay. You can also try this. Now I want to make sure that this isn't going to be too strong. You can see here how, how the, the distance of the four inches away goes to zone four plus plus. So here, here we're going to be about eight. We're going to be about eight inches away. So this is going to put us pretty high up there. But just because it's what it says on the box doesn't mean hey, that's exactly what it is. But these are strong bulbs. So if you're going to use a T8, you're going to want to make sure you have a solar meter first because you're going to want this to be a little bit taller. Uh, but again, it's just an option for you guys just to make sure uh, to provide that. Now, with how easy Kenyans are to take care of, there are going to be people saying they don't need UVB. You know, I'm always going to say provide it because A, they are cold blooded. They need the sun, they need the sun to survive. Logic di dictates they need all the, all of the waves of the sun given into their bodies as closely as possible for basic homeostasis. And right? Maybe. I don't know. That's just, that's just my opinion. I want to get onto building. So if you guys have any more questions about the lighting, drop it in the comments. I'll answer. So. Finally, I got the springtail and isopods in here. I got the BioShot, I got the biodegradables, I got the Sahara all mixed up. Next, what I want to do is create different zones the, the, for hiding. So you guys know I always create a, create a zone on the cool end and I create a zone on the hot end. And I break it down deep and then I'm going to take a little bit of this and I'm going to put it right on the hot end, right down there. When you mist, mist directly in here, that humidity spike's gonna go way up, it's gonna be warm. It's like a miniature sauna, great for shedding, respiration, and hydration. Now these guys do not need high humidity at all, but they can tolerate 
very mild humidity spikes during the time of shedding. Now you can tell a snake shedding when you can see their eyes. Their eyes get cloudy, their skin gets a little, you know, different of a color. Um, and you can see how, well, the best thing about Kenyans is they have almost, I don't want to say it's an iridescence, but they have this glistening to them. That when they're in shed, that glistening goes away. Look at that, I love it. All right, okay, I'm sorry. I'll come get you later. So we got cool side, or sorry, hot side, cool side. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting some hardscape in here. Okay. Okay, so this wood right here that you're seeing is called choya. I love this stuff because it looks good, does great in desert setups, and it looks nice. I've been going on a background kick lately. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but I like giving, I like giving the critters options. Okay, so Here's my plan. I'm going to be putting the probe right here for the thermostat. Basking spots right here. High at 92. It's probably going to stay around 90. This end's going to be towards the mid 80s. This will be mid 70s. Down below, you know, 73, 75. I'm going to be testing everything with an infrared temp gun, gun as well as my thermometer, hygrometer. Which also has a probe, which I'm going to move around, make it easy, keep it simple. Okay. The most important thing is we have areas to stick our head out to be able to, to catch prey with a lot of different angles. So I think my initial, my initial design here has that flaw, so I am going to make a change. Got an aloe vera here, so I'm going to take this. Look at that root system. Dig it. Okay. So I'm going to... Yeah. So I like having plants by their burrows that I'm creating here. Now, again, Kenyans are a little different. They'd much rather have like a, I shouldn't say much rather, but in the wild, if you lift up a rock, you might find a Kenyan sandbow under there. So that's kind of why I'm kind of creating some of the choya pieces underneath that are flat, having this choya connected here. I was trying to create what I would think, what they would want with as many oppor opportunity zones with their niche as possible. So how do I benefit that for them is, a, is what you want to ask yourself as you're building their enclosure. This is a zebra aloe right here. I'll put this bad boy, yeah. Okay, now this is actually gonna flower here in a couple days, looking forward to it. I got a spaghetti agave which I felt was very important. Yeah. All right, my only gripe, I shouldn't say gripe, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a better spot for this because the water bowl is going to need to go right here. And I just found it. Okay. 
I dig it. So I got the aloe vera here. So what I have to worry about with this is pushing up on the lid, but the best part about aloe vera, you can literally just snap it, use it if you hurt yourself. I got a little cut right there, naturally soothing. And then you can literally just keep raking. If you really wanted to, you can take this, plant it in fertile soil, it will grow. That's how they do it. Okay, so gonna go over last time. Got Sahara, got different biodegradables in here, Bioshot, Springtails, Isopods. Uh, I got some different types of Choya in here as uh, the Choya burls, Choya tunnels. Got three pieces of grapevine, uh, sorry, go, uh, cork bark for, two for hides, as well as a piece of uh, sandblasted grapevine right there. I got, and I think I'm happy with that. And then I'm gonna put the water bowl right here. I'm actually gonna grab a different one. One that's loose. Boom. So after we get a little bit bigger, I'm definitely gonna replace it. But I like this. So this is the Exoterra one, just so that way you guys can see. Okay, check it out. So it's small, itty bitty, but I'm fine with it. I'm really liking how this turned out. Um, I think for, for an adult, it would also be, it would also hold up enough. We would need bigger pieces of cork, but for this little guy, I'm really happy with it. So I want you guys just to get another really good look. So I guarantee you the moment we go in here, we're gonna use our little nose, our little pointy nose, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go burrow. So let's, let's check it out. All right, little dude, be free. He's like, I don't, I don't know what this is. You do. So, as we're here deciding what we do, you guys know me. My name's Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. Come check out my story here at The Bio Dude Houston. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You know, come by and see the dogs. Come by and see this Kenyan. Come by and buy this enclosure if you want it. But I appreciate everyone's support. I hope everyone stays healthy and has a great rest of their year due to Biden's.